All right, I just completed a project on the CNC. This is a two uh, version two. The first one was all MDF um, construction, MDF table. Uh, this one here, the main difference that made this a version two is the metal frame, um, actual electronics cabinet. And now I've added for version 2.2 um, linear rails for the X that goes on the gantry, the short direction, and the Z, as well as ball screws for those. Uh, I will be doing some rails on the long Y axis, uh, but that's <clears throat> an issue of time and budget. Um, it, it needs to happen though. I have about 20 thousandths of backlash uh, either direction on those axes, and when you're doing uh, fine detail carving, that's, that's too much. Uh, I overcome it right now with backlash compensation in Mach 3. Uh, but I'm down to just a thousandth or two on the Z and X axis right now. Uh, these are a genuine Hiwin or Hewin rails. Uh, these are the LG30, so it's a legacy model that's now discontinued, but uh, I got them from Automation Overstock as part of their surplus for 50% off or something. Um, the long axis is 59 inches long from here to here. The Z, the stroke, is about 8 inches, uh, though the actual Z height uh, that you see here is about 22, or the rails that I use there are 22 inches. Uh, the ball screw going across is a 25-25 high lead 4 start ball screw uh, and with, with associated ball nut, and then I have a 1605 lifting the Z up and down. So I've got here about 100 inches per minute on the Z which is much, much faster than what I had before. I was using a lead screw um, <clears throat> for the old one, and I only, just based on friction and, and other problems, I only got about 10 inches per minute. So this is about roughly 10 times faster than the old Z. Um, and the X-axis is actually about the same speed as it was before I was using roller chain, like I'm still using on the long Y-axis. Um, <clears throat> but I get a lot more rigidity and precision with the ball screw. Uh, I'm using 425 ounce inch motors, both for the X and the Z, and then I have a big old beefy 1600 ounce inch motor if you've seen my other CNC videos uh, in, the, in the rear of the gantry for the Y. Um, taking around this side. <clears throat> Again, much smoother motion, much more reliable, much more accurate. That right there is about 200 inches per minute. As I mentioned, this axis is about 100 inches per minute right now. Uh, I don't feel like I probably have a need for much more than that, but supposing I did, a bigger motor or a uh, motion controller would give me smoother motion as well as digital uh, stepper drivers. Here in the rear, <clears throat> this hasn't changed uh, even since version 1.0 is a 1600 ounce inch and it is very large about six and a half inches long um, stepper motor that's that's under here and that drives the entire gantry it's got a common shaft we'll call it a live axle going all the way through and very simply all it does is moves the sprocket that's uh, attached to the roller chain and you see I have a timing mark there Um, I figure at this point I'll go ahead and do a demo. Uh, what this is is Snowflake that I made <clears throat> for a buddy for his Christmas um, display last year at his church. And this was originally a 48 by 48 inch snowflake cut out of this material here, which is fluted. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's fluted core plastic is what it is. It's called hollow core or something like that. Um, and we made many a snowflake on this thing. Um, <clears throat> easy to cut material. Uh, it's very, very lightweight plastic. Um, <clears throat> the only major issue is that it caused a bunch, a bunch of um, debris. It caused flakes everywhere. So he got to have fun cleaning that up, and he's still cleaning it up. And I'll go ahead and start this demo now. The router itself is not turned on. So it's just going to be a dry demo. 
right now it's going at what it considers as rapid into place. It could go faster than that. <clears throat> um, right now it's cutting at what I've prescribed to be 150 inches per minute. <clears throat> um, I'll crank it up here in a second to go faster. But this is a very good cutting speed for something like this plastic. I'm going to crank up the speed now. Which basically is now just taking everything to its rapids. Videos don't always do things justice, but this table here is a full 4x8 sheet of plywood. My spoil board here. Uh, the travel on this machine is slightly more than that in every direction. So it's about 50 inch side to side travel, front to back. Front to back it's about um, 100 inches or, shit or, or so. It's, it's longer, than the, longer than the plywood sheet and then like I said my Z is somewhere around um, 8 inch stroke. <clears throat> Introduction to the machine and the upgrades done recently. I will say these high wind rails or anything similar, even probably the Chinese knockoffs, are light years above what and beyond what I had before. Um, that being said, they are very expensive. Uh, however, you just can't beat just can't beat what they add to the machine. So I'll be doing my first cut with a new setup here shortly, <clears throat> which will be replacement parts for these clamps here that I had on the old setup uh, with with the new geometry. I need I need a new dust shoe, and this is part of that assembly. So uh, the dust, the, the vacuum port comes through here, and <clears throat> the way the old one was set up, this uh, PVC tube was the vacuum port, and the router would just go through this opening here. This is a halo LED ring, so it fires LEDs downward. And then this is the, uh, it's a piece of 8020, it's a 1020 stock, I believe, that is used for uh, vertical positioning of the dust shoe. But this doesn't fit the new design anymore, so I have to remake uh, all the acrylic pieces, cut new ones of those, and cut new poly pieces for the, for the router mount. Um, and that'll be, that'll be the first project. <laughs> 